So let me ask you, Todd, Doxis 3.1, what have we learned so far in the industry? What, have, what are some of our customers' questions that they present to us when they want to get into 3.1? Can you give me some examples of what we've heard, what we've seen and experienced? Yeah, absolutely. So biggest things we've found is that people get confused about the standard mm-hmm. versus what they have to deploy or what they can deploy. A lot of flexibility in the solution that we're going to talk about. So that's, that's the biggest piece we want to look at and make sure that the industry knows. Yeah, so when you say standard, I mean, standards are held from, you know, really tight standards to very loose spec. I mean, what, what, for example, what's one of the standards that we've seen? Right, standards are built for the vendors, right? Mm-hmm. So that everybody makes the solution the same. So that parts and pieces from one vendor will interoperate with another. Okay. However, that d- doesn't mean that we have to. So that's what we're going to talk about here, some of those pieces of the standard that people really got confused on. Okay. So what do you have for us for our first one here? So first one, only way to get 1024 QAM, more bandwidth, mm-hmm. was to have to do node plus zero, okay. right? That's That came out, people really thought that had to be done, it was said, completely false. So with node plus zero, just real general sense, cascade zero, no actives in the field, right. just a node, Absolutely. passives, nothing beyond it. No, you Lots know, of expense. A lot of expense, extremely a lot of expense, and a little ROI on that, right? Right. Is that fair? Right. Okay. Right. So. Hard, to, hard to approve that ROI. <clears throat> right. So, and then when you say 1024, talking about QAM modulation schemes, right? What does 1024 really get us, or does it get better than 1024? Absolutely. A lot better than 1024, and it can. And that's, those are those parts of how does this standard work and how does it get bigger and bigger and better and better mm-hmm. that we can't forget about. It can do a lot more. Okay. And when we look at that, what is the answer to how much bandwidth we need, mm-hmm. right? And that's where we're going with and we And we want to go faster, right? We want to go, go faster. We want to go faster. Everybody wants to go faster. And we need, we need uh, to do it with less and less money spent. Okay. Absolutely. That's fair. Um, now we're talking about node plus zero. What about upgrade costs in general? And, and I see your next two up here, 85 megahertz, 1.2 gig. Big upgrades, a lot of costs, still a lot of costs. We're still keeping our cascade architecture, but we have still a lot of costs in changing all the amps. Is that something that they have to do? Absolutely not. Okay. Right? You can really look at that, 85 megahertz, do you have to do it? Right. No. Okay. The standard has it in that you can do it. You don't have to do it. So cross that one off the board. Perfect. 1.2 gigahertz is written in the standard. Again, a lot of cost and expense. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Do so, you so have to do it? Absolutely not. Do so, not have to do that. So with 1.2 gigahertz, 85 megahertz, a lot of the customers that I've dealt with, that, that this just turns them off, turns them away from it. And knowing that up front probably would have saved a lot of headaches. A Absolutely. Lot of, a lot of people want to go, and I'm going to kind of skew off of this, a lot of people want to go fiber to the home because they see these first three bullet points. You, des- you, you don't have to. There's, there's Com- options Complete there. barrier to entry. Correct. Now, there may be business reasons why we need to do these two elements. Mm-hmm. But that's a different conversation. That's a business challenge conversation, sure. right? We want, we want to do those if we need to, but that's a bigger mm-hmm. conversation. It shouldn't be a gating factor to DOCSIS 3.1. We, don't, we don't want to go there. Fair. So I see your next one, plant maintenance. The big thorn in the side for all all providers out there, right? Right. How much time in truck rolls, right? How much time in, in just maintenance downtime, right? Preventative. Right. So do I have to have my plant super, super tight? Does it have to be running spec perfect to launch right. 3.1? Absolutely not. Okay. Right. If if Doxus 3.0 was running today, mm-hmm. 3.1 is gonna run. Now, the better I maintain my plant, the better it'll work. As with always, we should always do our plant maintenance. Right. But appropriately so. But 3.1 works better, more air correction, a lot of elements that are built into it. Again, the flexibility was key of the standards body to make it work better mm-hmm. than 3.0 even does. So do I need to clean up my plant? Do I need to do maintenance? Absolutely. We never stop doing maintenance. Mm-hmm. But do I have to do it again as a gating factor that I have to do some massive type of work that I can't afford the bodies, I can't afford the time, right. I don't have the expertise and training? That doesn't have to happen. Mm-hmm. right away as a gating factor to get something rolled out that can start inching you forward. So we'll talk about, you know, a little bit too in, in, a, in a few moments too. Sure. But again, another one, mm-hmm. don't let that gate you on 3.1, on your conversation. Right. So, and then the last one, of course, changing out all of my modems. Right. CPE, right? Huge. CPE is huge expense. Huge expense. Right. I mean, you're, the cost behind it. I mean, you just went through all iterations of DOCSIS to get to this point and now 
three dot one comes out, do I have to change out everything to do three one? Right, absolutely not. Because three dot one is backwards compatible. Mm -hmm. what we want to try and do is drive the customers, the subscribers out there, your biggest customers, they drive to three dot one. You'll typically see ten percent of your subscribers go to three dot one initially. You slowly roll them in. Okay. A lot of your lower bandwidth subscribers, they're going to use 3.0. What you have already, absolutely. That CPE is bought and paid for. It's making you money. You don't have to change that out. There's so, no reason to change that out. So it still rides on 3.1 today. Absolutely. It's, it's just this 3.0 and 3.1 work is own... together. They work cohesively. They bond together. Right. People don't have to be scared of that. You do not need a whitewash <coughs> of your entire network to gotcha. make use of benefits of 3.1. So that's fair. We can check that one Cross off that one then, off right? too. Absolutely. So, so let's get into some of the benefits. Let, let's start debunking some of these perceptions. Right. Let's start going. Let's start going through some of the facts that we found in the industry and some of the yep. some of the experiences that we've had and and can share with everybody. Right. So and you've done a lot of this yourself. Yeah. Right. In so, the field. So a lot a lot of the fun that we've had uh, in, in this adventure in Docs's three one adventure is literally no plus anything. Um, you know, some of the first testing that we've started with as CCI and, and going through 3.1 analysis is launching in on architectures that were built as they stood today. Now, I, we, we cover, you know, Node plus zero. Well, what about Node plus 10? You know, what? It Start. sounds funny, right? It does. That, that doesn't exist anymore, does it? Oh, all over the place, right? <laughs> and it, right. Every, everybody's Node plus five and it's perfect. No, obviously right. not. You know, not right. a lot of people can afford it, but, and some of the people can't architecturally make it happen, if you will, without mm -hmm. going fiber to the home. Right. So re in reality, you have to keep your cascade counts. So Node plus anything does work. Now, there, there, there are some... Does it get better does with, it, with a lower cascade? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, of course that's, it does. That's the big thing, right? right? And it's all about performance. You know, it's all, it's all about how the plant works today, how well it works today, and how you can make it work better tomorrow. That's going to give you the extra performance. So Node plus anything, yes. But it gets better right. as you improve your system. But what have we seen higher than 1024 QAM, which gives you 25% more bandwidth Correct. than DOCSIS 3.0 mm -hmm. per megahertz? You think of that? More bits per hertz in a way to think about it. Have we seen higher than that at those high Absolutely. node plus what levels? Without a doubt, yes. How, what is the highest you've seen 4096 run at straight out of the box? Oh, straight out of the box, I would say 10 comfortably. I've seen it do 12 and 14. I don't recommend it, but it does work. Right. So it's going to be a trial and error as you go through your plant and, and test 3.1. Right? And they absolutely right. will vary. Right. So it depends on how well your plant works, how well DOCSIS 3.1 will perform on your system. So I would done, say... If you've done zero maintenance on your Node Plus 12 plant, You're going to have a lot of work on your hands. Yeah. You just are. Will you probably still run 1024 Quant? Most likely. And that is more bandwidth. Exactly. So you're still getting a out benefit. Out of the gate, you're getting a you're benefit. You're still getting a benefit. Gate. Correct. So I would say this is a yes by far. Yeah. That's one of our big ones, right? So 542, you do not have to have 85 megahertz. But there is a thing, right? If you're upgrading your plant, why wouldn't you consider going to 85 megahertz? It's a big jump. But if you're doing an overhaul on your system, whether it be through module swap or actually cutting the actives out and doing a design change, it really... I push for the fact that a customer should go to 85 megahertz. Why? Where's the labor, right? Yeah, it's going to be out there anyways. You're doing the work. You're already maybe, doing maybe the work. Maybe you're doing maintenance. Maybe you're sweeping your plant, right? Right. You're already touching the actives. You might as well do get some benefit out of it. A little There's extra something to look at. Out of it. But again, you don't have to, right? I mean, right. that's the key. You, do, you do, not do not have, have to. to. It works in 5 to 42. But when we're talking to the customers that we've dealt with in the past, one of the big things is what happens when people go fast in the downstream. They're going to want to go fast on the upstream. It's a tip for And they tap. have to. And they're, and they're eventually going to have to, right? right? I mean, it's going to be the demand. They're going to, they're going to ask for it. They're going to want it. They're the going to need it. The over-the-top video requires it. Correct. In many cases. So, so the faster you go down, the faster you go up. Do you have to do it today? Yeah. No. Can you get into this and then evolve to that? Absolutely. So 85 megahertz is a requirement of your business, not of DOCSIS 3.1. Correct. That is the key fact. So 5 through 42 checks. We're good there. So... Any forward megahertz. Now, this is a big one. Um, some of those, some of those <laughs> Node Plus 12 cascades. 750, me 750 megahertz, right? Very, uh, you know, I don't want to call it outdated. Or lower. It, or, right. or even lower, but I don't want to call it outdated. That's, that's wrong. Because if you're really looking at 750 megahertz, SD consolidation, eliminating analog, 750 gives you a lot of room. 
You can really spread your wings. You can do a lot with 750 megahertz. So you don't necessarily have to go through a full plant upgrade to 1.2 gig to actually get the full benefit of three dollar one. Now, if you're now if you're looking for room and you need room, and sometimes Cascade 12 gets you to that point, mm -hmm. you need a lot of room. You might have to open up quite a few different doxes for carriers to get to that point. So that's a different. Once again, it's a business driver. It's not necessarily a standard that has to be followed. So you can have 750. You can actually run three dollar one on 550. Absolutely. Been there, done that, and seen it. And then obviously 860 and everything above. So in reality. 3.1 will work on your existing system as it stands today. Absolutely. I think that's fair. So yep. that's another check mark. So, so we already talked about maintenance a little bit, but we can we can go into it a little bit more about normal maintenance, but then also, right, 3.1 brings a lot of maintenance tools. It brings proactive in, network maintenance. It, it brings maintenance tools in the form of testing qualm modulation. So, so when you actually go to a customer's prem, whether it be through a modem or even through your, through your actual meters, what you're seeing is you're seeing qualm modulation testing in am I achieving 4096? And when the results come back that you do not achieve 4096, well now, now you have another tool in the belt to say if I'm running at 2048 or 1024, why? Where is the impairment in my system? How can I get there? It's not a bad thing. It's another thing that helps you search for issues in your system. And a lot of them are remote. If you actually look at it from a modem perspective, your modems nowadays are so advanced that offering that qualm modulation, plus some of them you offer spectrum analysis, you're doing a lot of your troubleshooting behind a, a, a computer, at your laptop, at your desk, at your home, and you're looking at your system from your laptop and then directing your technicians to the field and showing them where the problems lie in the system just by going through a, a random check of modems in an area and saying which ones are performing at 4096, which ones are at 2048, and which ones are at 1024. And are some moving and changing. Yeah, absolutely, all the time, right? It probably, so does it, the system. It, so does the system. And, exactly. and that's gonna do, I mean, that's gonna allow us to what, right? It that's gonna allow us to see that a problem is happening in an area and it's probably not producing a trouble call. No, so again, absolutely being proactive. Not. It's very proactive. The, the 3.1 standard has a lot of troubleshooting numbers and resources and, and elements put into the mm -hmm. modems. So now they're like little meters absolutely. all around your plant. You don't have to have the need for a high bandwidth subscriber to mm -hmm. get a 3.1 modem. Common practice, put 3.1 modems at your end lines. Let, let me you see how it's performing everywhere in the network. Correlate that data, right? Mm -hmm. See how that changes and see how the network changes. You'll see a lot of maintenance you can do without getting trouble calls. Well, let's take it from a provider's perspective, right? Todd, do I have to sweep my whole system? Ex absolutely not. But wouldn't I like to know where I had to sweep? Right. Now all of a sudden I have a tool out there that shows me where I can go to certain areas and actually show me parts of the system that I have to sweep, that I have to be preventative on. And by your experience, how much of an average plant actually needs to be swept? From my experience, 30 to 40%. So if you took a 30 to 40% node to node breakdown and break that across the whole system, the cost savings on doing that is tremendous. 100% sweep versus 30% sweep. And it typically is the difference between doing it and not doing it at all. Correct. Because most people think they can't do it at all. Right. And they try and cover all the plant, right? And they can't. They can't physically do it with the amount, again, the amount of bodies, the amount of time. Time, time people. How can, we, how can we be smart? And there, this isn't just one little system. They have multitudes of system, right? So yep. actually having this launched in one part of your system, actually you're getting the savings twofold because you actually have a part of your system that's being proactively monitored to show you where the problems are, where those resources are being spent elsewhere in your system, getting those tuned up and ready for 3.1. And another key point is while the, the, the standard proactive network maintenance is built into this, mm -hmm. a lot of these elements can be done without even getting one of those interpretation tools. Right. For Very specifically yeah. for proactive network maintenance. Correct. Just looking at the data that is there for the average user collecting stats today, rudimentary level, tremendous amount of information can be given to you to be work smarter, not harder. Not harder, right? exactly. So, so so normal maintenance. And it's gonna bring you higher and higher levels Correct. than this, which gives you more and more bandwidth without doing outside plan upgrades. Correct. Saving money. Flex, 
Flexible and adaptable to your plant. Absolutely. Think about it as from everything we just talked about. Everything we just exactly. I, that, everything on the board shows that it, it, it's flexible. There's there's not a plant structure that has to be built to accommodate 3.1. There's not a certain spectrum that has to be you know achieved to a certain level to accommodate 3.1. So it is of course flexible. Obviously, I mean, when you cover it, the industry from 550 megahertz all the way up to 1.2 gig and say it'll work on everything in between, I think that's pretty flexible. Absolutely. You know, so I, I would say without a question, without a shadow of a doubt. Well, then big take, check mark. take outside of the outside plant. Think about our inside plant that goes across it. Mm -hmm. I have leakage tones, right? Sure. Yeah. That, they yeah. might be in a spot where I need to put my DOCSIS 3.1 carriers. How do I deal with that? I can exclude those areas. I don't have to move everything around and change. I can deploy around them. A lot of flexibility was thought about by the standards body. Looking at elements like how do I move around existing DOCSIS 3 carriers? How do I get around maybe some LTE interference that's out there today, but then I fix it, I can reuse that bandwidth. Sure. I can exclude. I also have a lot of what we'll call uh, for the CMTS community, <laughs> nerd knobs inside oh, the CMTS, yeah. where I can change the settings on it to give me more bandwidth to work with my plant specifically. There is out of the box settings, right? But once I know how it runs and I do let the system soak a little bit and get my information, I can start making slight changes to continue to optimize, optimize, optimize for my network. As an operator, it's about my network. It's not about somebody else's network. I need to be able to make it work for myself. Mm -hmm. Well, and then, and then take it from a perspective from, you know, take it back to the outside plant, right? Now, looking at it from the perspective of doing sweep, right? Essentially, when you're sweeping your plant, what's 3.1? It's covering everything in between. It's not just a, a series of, of modulated channels in six megahertz. It's a, covering a spectrum bandwidth. Absolutely. A, rel a really relevant spe spectrum bandwidth, excuse me. So, it's, so in, essentially, it's your sweep. So mm -hmm. how do they really tie together? <laughs> They're brother and sister. They really are. So you're if you doing sweep, maintenance. You're doing maintenance. If you sweep your plant or if you're monitoring 3.1 and you're truly looking at the numbers it gives you when you're, doing, when you're looking at 3.1, it's sweeping your system. So it's, you're providing something that essentially is helping you sweep. So it shouldn't be looked at as a hindrance or shy away from it because it'll cause more issues. It's actually helping you throughout the whole process. Right. Complete, for the most part, 180 of what the industry perception has been. Mm -hmm. And Correct. really been stopping a lot of operators from moving their business forward, competing and getting, subs and getting subscribers to come on board. On board, absolutely. So to, to uh, summarize back over it, you do not need to be node plus zero. You do not need to be 85 megahertz. You do not need to have 1.2 gigahertz. You don't have to go through massive changes and you do not have to change out all your modems. These alone have stopped many operators from deploying and moving forward, mm -hmm. or at least even thinking about how that might help move their business plans for the next two, three, and five years forward. Correct. And it would be safe to say that if you fall under, under any of the criteria here, it's safe to say that if you don't know, call and ask. Right. So how's a, how's a way to find out how 3.1 might work on your plant? I mean, what's, what's a good way to do that? <laughs> well. Outside plan ass assessments, right? Actually going through and launching it and looking at the system overall. And really, honestly, quite frankly, launch 3.1, put it on your system today, and go look at the endpoints. Test pockets? Absolutely, do test pockets. And then going out there and starting to see how it performs. That'll actually drive where your, where your, where your pain points are and where you really have to focus on in your now, system. Now, what if somebody doesn't have the uh, CMTS that can do 3.1 just yet, and they're, you know, they don't want to make that investment before they know it could work, what can they do there? You can still do it on 3.0. Look at your speeds, watch at 3.0, what it's supposed to perform at, keep that speed in mind when you're doing that, and then when you start testing your pockets, you're not achieving your speeds, find out why. Don't just accept the fact that you have you know, if, if you're actually supposed to be performing at a gig and you only achieve 800, find out why you're only achieving 800. You'd be surprised how much that is plant or head end or CMTS related. And that could be assessed also, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, throughout, throughout the whole thing. Different types of plant assessments. You bet. Absolutely. You bet.